Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week at the Club Condo. Yes, Rob Sisterino uh, back here to talk about everything fun going on this week in Survivor. Back here with the man who's won a million hearts. It's Chappelle. Chappelle, how are you? I'm good, Rob. I'm just doing the full tip boogie right now. You know, yes, I'm feeling got it. To. I'm getting, you got I'm getting to. hype. Get yes. Club Condo, Rob. Good time. It's, yeah, we're back, baby. Club condo. Yeah. Full tilt boogie. We're ready to go here after week number three of Survivor. Happy to be back here with you. Happy to be live on a Monday afternoon. Shout out to everybody here who's streaming the show. We love to hear from you. Say hello. We'll take your comments and fun if they're funny. Uh, yeah. Post them up on the screen. We take some questions too as we talk about. Uh, all of the crazy stuff going on here in the world of Survivor. Chappelle, what's going on? Uh, nothing, Rob. You can find me in the club as usual. Uh, but, Rob, we have to talk about last week's episode of Club Condo. The people are talking about it being... Place roundtable? It was amazing. Everybody loved it. I said, "What? Well, we should have done that before, but I don't think we had the perfect 17thers until this year. So, Rob, yeah. kudos on that great idea. It was such it was so much fun with the 17th, the several teenthers. Uh, and we gotta run it back one day. We definitely do. Yes, bring back the several teenth placers, annual mm -hmm. tradition on Club Condo. Very, very fun podcast. If you missed that one, it's evergreen. You could listen to it anytime, anyway. So very excited to talk uh once again here. And Chappelle, let's let's uh, get into all this, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, this was an interesting week in Survivor. Yeah, it was. Um, we saw a lot of just like, man, the 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 walls are caving in on this one person, and what is he going to do? And we saw him crumble under the pressure. We saw the emotions get to him. We saw all the things happening, and then by the grace of something, he was saved at the expense of someone else, and so. We got a lot to talk about, and I'm sure the internet has been talking about that, too. I cannot wait to discuss it all with you. Well, Chappelle, it's been quite a week on the internet mm. because people, based on my Twitter feed, my TikTok feed, my Instagram feed, people did not like this episode of Survivor. What? my See, my timeline is a positive place. We were mm -hmm. all going up. We were excited. We were talking about how this isn't, you know, Survivor isn't boring because stuff like this happens. You include people who could do off the wall crazy things that you just don't understand. And then that makes the game even more interesting. So I don't know who you're following, but there oh, must be some Debbie a lot Downers. Of people, a lot of people, a lot of people are down on this episode, what? down on this season. What? A lot of folks I'm seeing, they're talking about they're leaving. They're quitting they're, Survivor or at least quitting this season over, over this week. How many times do you think these people have quit Survivor? Never. But they're going, you, they're thinking about it. They're thinking well, about these, it. Well, these people have watched 45 seasons prior. And this was the moment. This was the last straw, Rob. Are you telling me this is what really people just... Are people are considering it, okay? And I'm here to say that I think maybe people are being... A little too hard on Survivor 46. This this was I, I think this was fine. This was a medevac. That's kind of a buzzkill. It's not that fun. I think we're gonna be okay. Listen, Chappelle, I, I go like I'm always trying to consume all of the information out there. I'm always trying to say, okay, what are the people saying on the streets? What are people saying on Twitter? What are people are saying on uh, you want to hear what one of my favorite hyperbolic TikToks of the week? Oh, is this Brian Cohen? No, it's not even Brian Cohen. Oh, listen, listen, listen to how worked up this guy is. For them. Instead, Cry Baby Banu gets the saving grace and all the camera time this episode. And he's annoying as fuck. And now nobody from Loser Purple Tribe is going to get voted out. This Banu baby ass biatch <laughs> is probably going to make it to freaking end of the show now. And I got to listen to him the whole way. He might win. He might just be a goat like <laughs> Philip Shepard. But damn. Now I got to listen to more of his crap gameplay and weak ass complaining. <laughs> Did we just witness one of the worst Survivor episodes ever? Meta backing another. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, um I, I can't even I, I have to hide the identity of this person because I don't want don't tell the Survivor 46 cast about this person. Uh oh. but Chappelle I, this was, I was 
Gus? I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware Hogan was a survivor. Fan. <laughs> Brother, this is the worst. The bitch, baby, bitch, back boy, Bono. <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> like, yeah. like, why are you talking like this? And now for the rest of the season, I gotta do. Like, All right, go down, Hulkamania. It's it's okay. I'm sure it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, everybody. I have seen Survivor do way worse. There was a one time there was a challenge where they just counted fish and they didn't even get to see the people count the fish. They just eyeballed it from a mile away. They're like, ah, oh, you look like you got the most fish in your bucket. You know, what are you talking about? How is this the worst episode of Survivor? What are you what are you doing? Are you okay? Sir, maybe this person, um, Hollywood Hulk, just take the time off. Take, take, just sit this one out. As long as Bono's in the show, just wait, wait a few, wait a few weeks. Maybe you think he's gonna make the final three. I highly doubt it. But if he does, maybe this is not the season for you. Because if this is the worst Survivor has ever given you, you have interesting taste, I shall say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sit <laughs> yeah. this one out. Let yeah. us enjoy the nice things that we have. Sasha's in the chat says, I find it funny how many people are crying about a guy crying. Glass house much? Yeah, there's so many people <laughs> are, oh my God. Are, are overreacting to Bono. <laughs> Listen, if I if we gotta get Banu out of the game so I don't ever have to hear this baby back bitch, I'm sorry, <laughs> bitching uh again, I swear that that's that, fine. Listen, I too will pray on Banu's downfall as long as y'all can shut the hell up because this mm -hmm. is not y'all are being so dramatic. I can listen, this is not even the worst episode in the new era. So just calm <laughs> down, okay? Just calm down. Yeah, this is fine. Chappelle, this was by my unofficial count. The 669th nice episode of Survivor. It's going to be okay, everybody. It will be okay. It will be okay. I'm telling you, this this is minuscule. But you know what? I think people are on the interwebs looking for engagement. They're looking for likes. They're looking for arguments. And they're being, you know, uh, combative for no reason. I think people are blowing this out of proportion because, honestly... I think this is a decent season of Survivor, and there's not a lot to talk about because it's pretty straightforward. And so because of that, people are like, let me come up with something spicy to say. Let me just say something like, Banu is the worst Survivor player of all time. You know, let's mm -hmm. say something crazy like that. You know, like, you know, or something, or Banu was the worst casting of all time. You know, again, <laughs> something just wild and out of line, just for engagement. And then when people push back against it, be like, what? What are you talking about? It's hyperbolic. I, I could delete it. Mm -hmm. But why would I? You know, like, yeah. let's let's keep Bonnie, the party going. Bonnie was great casting. Bonnie is uh, uh that look. If, if you want to say anything is wrong with the show, Bonnie might be the best part of the show. What would we have talked about on this episode <laughs> if there was no Banu? What would there have been to say? He gave us so much. We're talking yes. Mer Dragons here. We're like, there's too much going on yeah. on this episode with Banu specifically, where this could have been boring as hell, and yeah. he made it very entertaining. Okay, he made it very entertaining. But let me, okay, so let me just say a little bit about, uh, so Banu is with uh, the Masterminds, okay? Q and uh, Tiffany and Kenzie, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenzie, uh, Kenzie, we know, is the... The mer-dragon. Mermaid dragon. Mermaid dragon, right? Yeah, mer-dragon. So again, we saw people talking about this, breaking it down. I saw. I think I saw you do. Did you do AI to create yeah, this AI image? Yeah, AI to tell me what. Give me uh, like a half a woman who's a half mermaid, half dragon. Right. And so we saw, you know, what most people were saying is like the upper mermaid part is pretty humanoid. And so you wouldn't really have to worry mm -hmm. about that. But the, the the bottom half will be fighting for dragon and fish at the same time. Mm -hmm. But your really did pull the dragon side up a little bit. It's hard more. to. It's hard to. Yeah. I had, yeah. Yeah. To. Yes. But I think that makes sense. I think you get what he's trying to say, right? You this is a dragon that is alluring, but also more than meets the eye. You know, yeah. I think that's what he was trying to give. Here's what I want to ask you, okay? Um, has this is, a, I think, an interesting question. I don't have, I haven't heard anybody talk about this yet. Has has Banu been mistreated by the three masterminds in the tribe? We see him very upset. He goes, he goes on the journey. He tells everybody about all the, the things that were done to him. Do you feel like his tribe has treated him poorly? Uh, no, I actually don't. I think this is, uh, isn't there a, a parable or something about like a frog in boiling water, right? Where they're in the water the whole time and they don't, they can't, they don't know that it's boiling because it's getting hotter and hotter. And by yes. the time they've realized it, it's already too hot. 
to do anything about it. I think that's Banu. Banu has been playing this game with people who thought he thought was like on a general level, just like, hey, we'll vote out the people who are unpleasant, the people who don't mesh well for whatever reason, and we'll be sad about it and we'll move on. But in this episode, it's like all the numbers and stuff started flooding into his head. Like, yeah, like he woke up and he could see everything that we could see now. He's like, wait, are you telling me that those people? They wanted Jelinski out all along, but they made Jess think it was her because they wanted Jess to play her shot in the dark. And then when they wanted Jess to go out, they wanted me to think it was me so that Jess, so that I would play my shot in the dark and then they could come after me. And he's like, they're, cra they're crazy. How are you playing this level of gameplay right now? Why are you playing so hard? And he's like, am I the drama? Am I the only person who isn't? And then he thinks, okay, well, who do I go to? Kenzie, help me, help me. Everybody's crazy. She's like, yeah, yeah, we are. Now, tell me who you want to vote for so I can vote you out using that information. He's like, oh. he's like, oh, <laughs> Kenzie, mermaid dragon. She's like an evil mastermind. And she's like, okay, well, Banu, tell me what, tell me what you want to do. Chappelle, I'm old enough to remember last week's episode when Kenzie mm -hmm. came to Banu and Jess and said, hey. Why don't we vote out Q? And what'd they do? They went back and told Q. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Banu is sitting here talking to talking to Kenzie and she's saying, tell me who to vote out. And all he can see, because now he can see clearly, if I say the word anybody's name to Kenzie, she's going back to that person. This person but is not, this is not my friend. He did yes. that to her. Yes, and now he can see clearly that that's, that's how the game is played. <laughs> and when he did it, he just thought, well, you know, I'm trying to save it. Like he wasn't thinking about it along these lines. Now he's looking at a mermaid dragon and the mermaid dragon is like luring him in. Just tell me, give me information to use against you. You will have the numbers. It's fine. And he's just like, he's slowly giving into hypnosis. And he's like, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. She's crazy. I go, okay, boom. I'm going to go to Q. Q, help. Tell me what to do. And Q's like, yeah, okay. Well, you're not really a threat. You're also kind of a Philip. I think I'm gonna keep you around as my Philip Bottle was like, please, just anything, just save me. It's like he is afraid of Q and Tiffany in the game, but he is terrified of Kenzie in the game. Mm -hmm. It was like he was staring at it. Was the nicer she looked, the more I guess, uh, like like unauthentic it looked too. You know, like Q was telling him, Hey, you're bad at this, so I want to keep you around. She's like, Banu, what are you talking about? No one ever wanted you out. We didn't, we we didn't want to vote out, just we had to, you know, we didn't mm -hmm. have any choice. You're not on the bottom. What are you talking about? You're good at this game. Tell me more information. And he's like, oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so he had to turn into the only person. I thought this was fascinating. It's like he was figuring out Survivor was being played while playing Survivor. He just mm -hmm. was late to the party. Okay. Later on in the episode, okay, Banu gets to finally talk to other people in the, uh, not in his tribe. And he gets to tell uh, Ben and he gets to tell uh, <laughs> that uh, Liz, 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 Mariah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Liz and Ben on the journey um, that he gets to tell them um, what the, the horrible things the, uh, the other people in the tribe. Listen to this. Listen to this. They say that I'm, a f I'm only emotional and I'm a fool. That's all I am. They said that. That yes. does not rock. Yes. <laughs> Remember when when the other people in the tribe said Banu was a fool? Oh, I feel like a fool. Remember when the other people said that? Maybe they did say it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying believe Banu above all else, but mm -hmm. I mean somebody in the tribe said it. Somebody said the word fool. He said he felt like a fool. But yeah, I think what it is is that he's they're playing him like a fool. Like they're mm -hmm. obviously gaslighting him and letting him believe that he's not <laughs> on the bottom of this tribe when he really is. And so he was just paraphrasing. You know, he, he listen. He, but nobody has said one cross word to him. No, no, no. But I think again, I think it's the idea that there that he knows. He knows what like y'all cannot tell me y'all don't want to vote me out. I can see it. I'm next. And they're like, no, Banu, you're not next. Mm -hmm. You're with us. You're, we're all tied for first. It's like when they were trying to find, help Jess find the idol. They're like, Jess, they're going to vote you out. She's like, who's going to vote me out? It's like, them. Well, who? Uh, everybody else. But you work with me and we'll, we can use this idol as a surprise. It's like, well, why don't you just go get them? Because they just told me you wanted to vote me out. You know, Banu is seeing all the points just fall in line for him. Uh, my favorite thing about Banu going and spilling the beans like this is that they called it. They said, Banu 
is the worst person to go on this journey. Probably because he might come back with something, but definitely because he's going to spill the beans. And I was counting the seconds. I mean, I was watching him get off the boat, mm -hmm. watching him walk. And he's about to spill the beans first. But Ben says, wait, Banu, let me just talk to you real quick. I don't know where. Ben just kind of, let me just, I'm sensing I need to say some nice things to you, Banu. I can see your whole heart in this game. I see I see you. You're loving this. You're living for this. And I can tell that you're just putting your all into this and that this is so important to you. And I love that. I love that for you. Those are real genuine words. And so Banu, for the first time, here's somebody who is actually being kind to him with no ulterior motive. Just somebody saying, let me just say some nice stuff to you. And he just crumbles. He's like, oh my God, I'm a bit. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you everything. Kitty's a monster. She's a dragon. She's a mermaid. It was so good. I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, Sasha in the chat says that, uh, well, Q called him wackadoodle and Philip, low, low insult. That okay. Q Banu didn't called call, himself a yeah, wackadoodle. Q, Q didn't call him a wackadoodle. <laughs> that Q was talking about, he was telling that, that Banu that you could win. Banu said this I'm a wackadoodle. <laughs> <laughs> he and Q said, said I'm a wackadoodle. But Q did not deny it. Q didn't say, no, Banu, you're not a wackadoodle. <laughs> Q said, yes, and. <laughs> yes, and I will carry you to the end. No, he said, yes, and you can win. So that was kind of kind of nice. But again, if he's looking at Q, Q is telling him what his ulterior motive is. It is, I would like to use you as my Philip and go all the way to the end so I can beat you. So he's really hearing that this person is, although he's saying, like, yeah, you're a wackadoodle, but don't quit the game. I got you. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's not the most encouraging thing ever. Yeah. Okay. But Chappelle, this episode of Survivor, Survivor this was inspiring, you know? Yeah. This oh, was, yeah. these people were down and out. Mm -hmm. And they really were like hoping upon hope that things were going to go their way not n not just one contestant of course we 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 know about banu when i prayed this morning I was giving gratitude i asked god like you know show me a sign that you exist that you're listening to me god show me a sign that you exist mm -hmm. okay and th and that was when he just got to go on the journey that was yeah. that was god showing him a sign okay but then here's here's tiffany I said a prayer. I'm like, God, this is going to be hard tonight. Can you please give me a sign? Can you please give me a sign? God, I don't know about you, Chappelle. I had, I went to church yesterday. Um, I know you saw my tweets. I yes. definitely went to church. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? What? This had me at Hello? home shouting. I was, yeah. I was, I did a little praise lap and everything. You people. The power the, of faith. This is the worst episode of Survivor ever. How about, how about you? God is proving his existence. God is great, people. Okay? God does not have a vested in, in, uh, interest in Survivor. It's famous <laughs> famous words here, uh, you know, but I will say this. It for oh, the story. Glory. Hallelujah. For, for the story, this to this was totally perfect. It really showed Banu just like giving into his faith and saying, "I don't have anything else. I'm looking for a miracle." And he really got one. At the mm -hmm. expense of Randon. God doesn't like Randon. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That God did what what did Randon do? Prior well, you know, Rand Randon was on borrowed time. His kids said he should have been the first out. God said, oh, okay, I'm going to let you cook for a little bit. And then his kids were like, hey, we miss dad. He said, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Because <laughs> God God will smite some people on Survivor. The, you think that you, you want to say that God didn't have anything to do in uh, a certain medical evacuation in Survivor, the Australian Outback? I, I'm not speaking on that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking on that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Nope, not touching God, that one. God has been known to be the reason for some medical evacuations, okay? He'll step in sometimes when it's necessary. You know, maybe this is for the greatest story. But, yeah, I mean, we've seen Russell Swan even crying out to God and being like, why, Lord, Jeff, you know, mm -hmm. help me. <laughs> um, you know, I can't win like I want to. It, I think this might be something that people can use for introspection. I'm not saying if you pray to God, you will do well in Survivor or you will survive the vote. We've seen people pray and just go on out the game. We've seen people pray and not take advantages. I'm thinking of Davey and Survivor uh, Davis versus Goliath. We seen people pray and then something like this happened so uh your results may vary but i don't think there's a downside I mean, to you giving into your faith the and, man uh, just leaving. went to sleep and then woke up with an injury i mean right i mean is this guy the lord has, works in mysterious ways and by lord i mean jeff 
Yeah. I would say, is it tampering? <laughs> Do you think anybody in his sleep came and just like, because I thought he got bit by a spider or something at first. Because he was like, you know, I got like, you know, it's like, it's like a numbing. It kind of tingles. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought something like that was going on. But, um, you know, it seemed like Randy getting pulled from the game is good for Banu. It might be good for our viewing pleasure. Maybe, maybe this is God's long-term plan to get some of these crybaby viewers out of the show. Because oh, if this is all it takes get to get you to, to quit. quit. God's been like, I've been trying to get y'all out of here for, for years. You know, like, listen, if if this is what it takes, God, God is the survivor thing. bouncer. Yeah, exactly. He's the bouncer at Club Condo. You got to mm -hmm. see God before you come in the door, but you better not be wearing them shoes. <laughs> okay. So I that was amazing. I mean, how often do you see a miracle on TV? He needed it. That's my favorite thing about it is that he asked for it. You know, he he said, listen, I need this so bad. He had Ben and Liz slash Mariah doing the same thing. They were also hoping that he got uh, a, a miracle that he needed. And we saw that time after time, this could have not worked out for him. He pulled the correct rap. He got to do the puzzle. He did the puzzle poorly, you know, to where he didn't even finish the puzzle. He came back and he barely had a lie to tell these people like, yeah, we just, I just, I don't know. I didn't have, and then he folded and told Q, I don't have a vote. What are we going to do? You know, like left and right, it looked like Banu was on the way out of the door, but he wasn't. And so but I think that now that Banu is here, we need to enjoy whatever Banu gives us in the next episode because God spared him for a little bit. Yes, and he's given us so much already, Chappelle. Mm -hmm. Do you think does Banu have more to give? I think so. I, I listen. I know people have been debating whether or not there'd be a tribe swap or if any, uh, but I think we could really like we could really use like let let okay, God. I went to church on Sunday, so this is for me to you. Okay, give us a tribe swap. Save Banu just a little bit longer because if we can get Banu to like the merge or something like that, he's here to party for a while, and that would be fun. Um, but maybe maybe he just needed to stay one more week. We don't know. I don't know what God be thinking. Mm hmm. Um. They told Banu in this episode, he was actually, he was quite upset in the beginning of the episode and they, because they told him that he, it's okay to lie to Jeff Probst. He was uh, like, God, I mean, Jeff, you know, yeah, what? <laughs> that I, I can, he said, I can just tell Jeff, you just want me to just tell Jeff some crap. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But later on in the episode, we, we found out this about Banu. I came here because you inspired me to be on Survivor and because you're my guru. Jeff is Banu's guru. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. I mean, I'm sorry. It just is. And you, you tell me, like, this man has been looking up to Jeff Probes. He watched Survivor. He's, like, becoming a citizen. The moment he becomes a citizen, the first thing he does is apply to be on Survivor. He told us that in the first episode. So it, there's no world where I don't think he has a hero worship of some sort of Jeff Probst. And so, yeah, imagine this. This man wants nothing more to the, be in the presence of Jeff Probst and to play this game that Jeff Probst is the, is the face of. And then you get there and you're like, okay, now you're in front of your guy. This is your moment. This is the, the perfect time for you to meet one of your, like one of your favorite people in the whole world. Lie to him. Bono's like, what? But we're besties. We're best friends. Why would I do that? I don't want to lie to Jeff. Y'all lie to Jeff. I'm not doing that. I got to feel him. You know, you know, everybody doesn't get to meet their gurus. Chappelle, who's your guru? You. No, stop it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's Jervis. But it's okay. One day. Maybe <laughs> would one you day. lie? Would you lie to Jervis? In, in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, look, I think that this season, uh, look, I, I think this week was a drag. It was a medical evacuation. There's nothing that you can do about it. But, you know, like you have to remember, like in, in a vacuum, you know, you don't really judge the just like a like a down episode so much in the course of the season you know when you go back and you binge these episodes it's like okay on the on the rewatch okay you start the next one it's not the end of the world no it's it's not the end of the world and again there have been bigger roadblocks bigger stumbling uh stumbling obstacles here in survivor history that we had some good oh. momentum and then something happened and then it just threw off the entire game threw this off the whole season Right. This does not compare to that at all. This does mm -hmm. not compare to that at all. If Randon was the like the runaway favorite, if he was the hunter of the season, we already got one of those. But if he was the other one, if that was the case and then he gets removed and Banu's who we have to stay with and Banu gives us nothing, then maybe you could say that. But 
Brandon hadn't been getting much in the show, maybe because they knew he was going to get edited out or that he wouldn't, you know, he was going to get pulled from the game. So I don't feel like we took that big of an L here. We got to see some very big character moments from Banu. And we know that Banu now sees the entire board for what it is. He knows that Kenzie cannot be trusted. Tiffany cannot be trusted. And he potentially has allies on the other side. Give me more Banu. Yeah. He has the most interesting storyline so far. I think so too. And I feel like that we got to see how this all plays out for Banu. It's like, I, I'm going to be sad. If Banu gets voted out this week, I'm going to be sad. We got to protect Banu. Protect Banu at all costs. Th look, I drafted this man. I knew he was, yeah. I, you know, I know gold when I see it. And I warned you then. You did, and you were wrong. You said, <laughs> Chappelle, I think you got the grenade. And here we are. He's got going the grenade. into episode but, four, and Don okay. and I said, nope. Yeah, but and the Lord works in mysterious ways for mm -hmm. sure. But this is this miracle will feel a, a bit hollow uh, if Bonnie only forgets the miracle this week to get voted out this next week. No, like you said, mysterious ways. This just because Banu did not uh, go home in the last episode does not mean Banu is supposed to make the merge yeah. or win the game. What it, this is a butterfly effect of sorts that happens. Thus, we have people on TikTok making themselves look silly by crying about how big of a uh, flop this season is. People saying they're going to quit the show like they do every year, but sometimes some of these people might actually quit, and that just might make you know the scenery at the club a little bit better. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, like, if you want to go. Go. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Well, this week we also found out about Banu's mission, which I don't think he said in the preseason, uh, but he said a couple times in this episode. My point being on Survivor is not to win a million dollars. I want to win a million hearts. A million hearts. You know, Banu, my boy, he going for that sea of money. You know what to say, <laughs> Banu. That's what I'm talking about. You see, see, that's God working. God said, Banu not going to win this game. But I bet God, Banu would love to meet Sia, you know. And I think that if you say <laughs> that, Sia Guru, yeah, some to somebody, yeah, uh, to to what Maddie from Dance Mom she is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that yeah, I think that once she said once he says that line, Sia just starts opening the pocketbook like, okay, well, let me see five, two, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And the more and the longer he lasts, she's like, okay, 100, 100, 200, 200, 300, 400. Uh. You know, if if he makes the top five, like if he makes the finale episode, yeah, he might as well have won the entire game because he's she's gonna give him a million dollars. Yeah, she's got his Venmo uh, ready. She's uh, he, contacting CBS. Right, they're just waiting, waiting for him to get out the show. She's gonna double whatever he did. That's what I'm saying. Mysterious ways, Rob. Because I think had Banu gone an episode prior, Banu does not get the see see of money. There are too many options on the mm -hmm. board. He made himself far and away the favorite to get that money in this episode, and it's not even close. You think Sia might just call it next week? Yeah, like she's like she's like we're just gonna get an update. Yeah, we're just gonna get an update there. And by the way, Banu has been rewarded see of money. It's like wait, you don't. She normally waits until the end of the season. It's like yeah, but she needed to step in. They Matter get free mail. No, she's gonna show up on the island like Jeff. She's gonna wake him up in the middle like, hey, hey, Banu, Banu, get up. Crap, crap, crap. Okay. Yeah. I brought in. I brought in Doctor Will. No, not for any real reason. He's just the only one who knows how to drive the boat. I'm here mm -hmm. to give Banu a bunch of money. It's Banu. Here you go. I was like, oh. And thank you, you strange lady. You know, so I, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Look, I've already told people a long time ago, your odds of getting the sea of money are better than getting the million dollars. You need to go on there, save some chickens, do some prayers, cry a little bit, talk mm -hmm. about yourself, be, you know, play some get play a game as hard as you can, but be authentic. I think Sia sees authenticity and she likes to reward it. Okay. All right. So Chappelle, that we talked about the greatness of Banu and of everything that he's doing to give us so much to talk about. But you know that this Survivor 46, as I mentioned, it's not hitting for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Who everybody's did? entitled to their opinion, but there was one opinion that really ruffled some feathers in the Survivor Russell. community. Russell, Rob. Ru uh, Russell, you can Russell say also, feathers. I'm surprised this wasn't Russell. Uh, Russell yeah, you wrestled like you wrestle some leaves. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, and and bring this up. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Big Brother 15 winner Andy Heron had mm -hmm. tweeted out on back on uh, March 15th. What was that? I guess uh, Friday. Said <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Is this season of U.S. Survivor extremely off-putting? Or am I just spoiled because Australian Survivor's casting is so much better? 
I'm not sure, but boy, am I having trouble getting into Survivor 46. A lot of exclamation points, I will say. Oh, oh Andrew. <laughs> Here's the thing. The Andy Heron tweet in a bubble would be fine if he took out one word in One there. word? Okay, what's the word? Casting. 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 If you said Australian Survivor is better than U.S. Survivor right now, anybody who's watching Australian Survivor would rubber stamp that. They're like, baby, we seeing some amazing stuff over there right now, and that's wild, okay? That is something that we could all get behind. When you say casting, that makes it sound like there are some off-putting people on this show. You know, the, the, the people themselves are doing off-putting things, and yeah. that is why I think some of the castmates might have taken offense to that because okay. it, I think, again, I think, yeah, you could dislike a season of Survivor. You can have trouble getting into it. I think there's a lot of good stuff in this Andy tweet. I am not sure, but boy, am I having trouble getting into Survivor. Okay. So, nobody, nobody will fault you for having trouble getting into a season. But when you talk about the casting, I feel mm -hmm. like that's when you, that's like a group, you know, like on Facebook where you could like at highlight people and at everybody, you know, at everyone or whatever. And it's just like you minding your own business. And all of a sudden you're tagged in a post you didn't even know you were tagged in. That's what this was. When you said Survivor's casting, I feel like all the people who ever played Survivor in this season specifically got a notification and said, wait a minute. What do you yeah. mean by that? Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. Um, so Andy, he's been talking about Survivor, uh, Australian Survivor. You and I both watch Australian Survivor. We love Australian Survivor. I mean, if we, for anybody... For the uninitiated, okay, the people that are not watching Australian Survivor, let me give you a little bit of the tale of the tape between U.S. Survivor and Australian Survivor, okay? U.S. Survivor is 26 days, and Australian Survivor is 26 episodes. Whew, okay? So 26 days in Australian Survivor, they're just <clears throat> making the merge, y'all. They're just making the merge. It's been a month. Mm -hmm. And they're just meeting half the cast. <laughs> yes. Okay. So in American Survivor, Chappelle, that everybody is in small tribes of six, so you get the chance to know everybody. In Australian Survivor, you get to know six people. Because each tribe is, what, at least 10 people? <laughs> at right. At least 10 people. Like right. they're, they're bigger than 10 people in some seasons, for and sure. And they just, the people that are not interesting, they just don't show you them. But six, you don't, you're going to get to really know six people. And you're going to fall in love with those six people. It's very mm -hmm. reminiscent of, I don't know, Survivor proper. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. U.S. Survivor in the old days, where you had your stars of the season, and then every now and then you're like, wait, who is that? Yeah. Austin? Nick? Which one? Yes. You know, like you just don't get to know everybody like you do in this this new era of Survivor 46. Yes. Okay. Um, U.S. Survivor recently expanded to extended 90 minute episodes of Survivor. Australian Survivor occasionally gives you shortened 90 minute episodes of Survivor. And then sometimes it feels like it's on for three days in a row. Like, in a, and also it's on for three days in a row. That, I, I mean, not to jump the gun, but I've watched an episode of Australian Survivor that I thought took me until the following Tuesday to finish because it was so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one is very difficult to stream and has all kinds of uh, different issues with trying to watch it online. And the other is Australian Survivor. Right. And there are three episodes a week. Literally three episodes a week. <laughs> yeah. Three. Right. So we, we love Australian Survivor too. I, I've said that you look, uh, I, Australian Survivor is, uh, I think is, is incredible, but I don't even think that us Survivor is trying to be the same thing as Australian Survivor. So it's a, you know, they're both called Survivor, but they're two completely different shows, but to the cast of Survivor 46. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, they took some offense to what it's Andy had to say. And there was a seemingly uh, uh, co well, planned, corroborated uh, planned. response. No, no, no. All of these players 
follow Andy Heron and hold on to his every word, his every tweet. Our, yes. They got his notifications on, and they were all very offended by this tweet separately. They did not talk about yes. this at all. Yes, they're, they're very, very tapped into what the uh, 10 season ago Big Brother winner had to say. Okay, so let's let's take a look at some of the responses to Andy Heron. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, Charlie from Survivor 46 said, uh, responded, no, but I felt pretty turned off from BB15 actually. Now, all right. Ooh. Andy was the winner of Big Brother 15, notorious for being the most racist season of Big Brother. And that's saying something, Chappelle. Right, because Big Brother been racist since racism was the racist, okay? And so it took a lot to get to BB15 to where CBS finally had to put their foot down and be like, all right, y'all, listen. <laughs> the, the, they're being racist on the show, but it does not reflect us. We do not sign off for it. We're going to show it. We're mm -hmm. going to show it. We might even hide it from you, mm -hmm. but it... These are not, this does not reflect the views of CBS. Let them be racist on their own time. Hell, Julie Chin had to pull them to the side. Imagine for the people who only listen, like only watch Survivor who are listening to this. Imagine if Jeff Probst at Tribal Council had to pull somebody to the side and say, Hey, what's that racist stuff you said about me, the host? <laughs> <laughs> that's what Big Brother 15 was. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so that was a, that's, that's, that was a pretty uh, strongly worded response. From Charlie. Okay. Again, All right. again, still not that combative because who didn't feel pretty turned off from Big Brother 15, actually? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's, I say this is fair. I don't think this yeah. is bad. By the way, uh, did any of the people that are quitting Survivor 46 now, did they, did they quit Big Brother that summer? Have they ever quit Big Brother? <laughs> <laughs> if you watched more than one season of Big Brother, you need to sit this conversation out. Yeah. Okay. I, I right. included. <laughs> but okay, let's keep going. All right. Uh, then Jelinski had, this is the, uh, Alyssa Riley Slater. I think that's her mm -hmm. name. Uh, and then, uh, she, uh, she, she clears you. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't thing. really get that one. Jelinski. Well, uh, listen, legendary tweet from my boy Jelinski. <laughs> yeah. It seems like he's insinuating that, uh, Jelinski Alyssa is a legend. Alyssa greater than Andy Heron is essentially what this tweet is saying. Now, oh, that wise, bold, bold tweet from Jelinski. That wise, it's a bold ass lie, you know, <laughs> in, in, statistically. Like as far as gameplay goes, Andy packed her up real good. Mm -hmm. um, as far as people, as casting wise, people you'd rather see on your television screen, I would argue that pro there is probably a a big contingent of people who mm -hmm. would rather see Alyssa than Andy. I'm not speaking on myself. Okay. I'm just saying that I, based off what I've seen on Twitter. I see that there would be votes going in both directions for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, Mariah just had like the like winking guy. Uh, <laughs> the excuse gift. me? Yeah. yeah. What? what? Yeah. I, yeah. Look, look. Mariah makes far too much money to be bothered by the tweets <laughs> of Andy Heron. Okay. She is very rich. And she does not have time to read Poe-ass tweets. And Andy, he won Big Brother. But I don't might get that much money just from being getting the sea of money. Right, right. Andy only won 500,000 hearts. Right. Only mm, hearts? <laughs> dollars. Dollars. Andy won dollars for sure. Because Andy, I think Andy is a great Big Brother player. But I think the hearts is where Andy be missing mm -hmm. the mark. Yeah, Andy was kind of, I think the reason why they started asking the question, uh, would you rather win and be loved or lose and be hated? Yeah, but oh, Andy. Sorry, but I, I, got, I said it wrong, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Would you rather win, win and, be and be hated or, lose, or and be lose, lose and be loved? Yeah. And season after season, people forget that Andy exists. They say, I want to win and be hated. I'm like, no, you do not. Yeah. No, you don't. Because I know that Andy, deep down, yeah. I know he loves that he won Big Brother, but I know he really wishes that people would leave him the hell alone sometimes. <laughs> no, I think he he likes the attention. He likes oh, the attention. Oh, you think it's a kick? And, yeah. And look, uh, I think Andy is funny. I think Andy yeah. is an acquired taste. He's been on the podcast many, many times. Very smart. Uh, Very funny. Always has, you know, interesting uh, takes for sure. Um, but uh, this one, this one ruffle and rustled the feathers. But see, I would argue that this tweet was not meant to do that. It's just that Andy was just typing as if he doesn't have followers that are just waiting to pounce. <laughs> These people are, like I'm saying, Andy put himself in a spot where people are praying yeah. on Andy's downfall. When Andy okay. tweets, some people are like, what do you mean? What is that about? 
Say All that right, again. Well, Say it with your let, chest. Let's keep going. All right. And then, okay. Uh, this is Ben Katzman. He says, what's BB-15? I only know about BB-8. And he has a picture of BB-8. Yeah, that's a, that's a Star Wars joke. Yeah, I don't... Mm. Star Wars joke. Yeah, yeah we yeah. could talk about BB-8 some other time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then uh, Jess said, why do they keep saying fried rice? Now, I don't know. I didn't click on the video that she I tweeted. Could, uh, remember when I said that, you know, Julie Chin oh, had Julie. to pull the cast to the side and be like, hey, why are you saying racist stuff sp potentially about me? Um, yeah. They weren't talking about Julie Chin in the moment, but some of those shots were hitting some, like they mm -hmm. were stray bullets flying left and right from that cast and it was uh, coded in racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, okay, this one is... That's Hunter. Okay. That's Hunter. Okay, Hunter, mm -hmm. who I think that like, this is like his first tweet ever. Yeah, he, um, he reactivated his account just reactivated to yeah. just to put post the disclaimer that they had to start putting on the live feeds after too many people were complaining about all of the racism. Yeah. Um, re reveal prejudices and other beliefs that CBS does not condone. OK, so CBS literally is this huge mega corporation and they have to be like, they doing a lot for us. They could CBS could tell them to stop. But before telling them to stop, they said, listen, and if you hear something that we that we miss, it ain't got nothing to do with us. Yes, mm -hmm. that's on our show, but it ain't got nothing to do with us. BB-15 is so racist that it made CBS. And CBS has handled a lot of things poorly. This is the same CBS that handled Survivor Season 5. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. nope, this is fine. Uh, the same CBS. And they're like, nah, Big Brother 15, can't touch that. <laughs> Don't they know still have people. the disclaimer. And it, it will never go away. It will <laughs> never go away. And they are doing uh, they are game sensitivity changers. training. They're doing sensitivity training in the house currently. And it will still never go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, and this is back when the live feeds, like, we're not on, like, tape delay. Right. Yeah. They, they have done so much to fix the damage <laughs> of Big Brother 15 uh, because there was just so much problematic stuff. Like, Big Brother 15 as a game, I thought it was very compelling. But it's really hard to tell when people are calling the black girl Shaniqua and saying that if she closed her eyes in a dark room, nobody would be ever see her. You know, like that. Those are quotes from Big Brother 15. Yeah. You know, um, just say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or was it Shanene? I think it might have been Shanene. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't. I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie on the Big Brother 15 cast. Okay. Then. Uh, okay. Oh, Tiffany came out and said, "You're right." It's way more fun to watch people be racist like on BB-15, right? Okay. Now, I quibble with this just a little bit. Big Brother does a really good job of making their racism look fun. Okay? <laughs> Big, I will say that. We, you can watch a Big Brother season and it will... It will like uh, Nickelodeon slime you in the face before it tells you like this is a this is a dark season of television. It's like you got all the lights and the, the Judy chops and stuff are popping out. You're like, oh my god, this is so much summer fun. There's a rubber duck here, but then there's a deep underbelly of Big Brother. <laughs> then you're like, wait, so y'all telling me all that stuff on the live feeds doesn't matter at all? I'm just supposed to watch the TV. They're like, yeah, who would you believe the things you saw on the live feeds mm -hmm. or our editing? And you're like, huh. I don't know. So Tiffany, she's on the right yeah. track, but also Big Brother do be fun to watch. Anything that they add in the clown horn honk honk, like yeah, it's gonna Ooh. be funnier. Bro, Becky got hit by a train and they made it fun. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> like every time Becky's going, mm -hmm. Christmas ran over somebody with her car. You know, you hear mm -hmm. every time she comes into a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They do okay. that on Big Brother. They do that. They do that. Okay. Um, and then okay, Jungle Gem said, "Better to be off-putting than racist." Points are made. Where's the lie? Like, yeah. Points are made. Now, about the racism, though, let's make sure that you know everybody is being uh, anti-racist at all times on these shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very, it's very easy four episodes in, three episodes in, to be like. Our cast didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Because we got plenty of time. <laughs> yes. We got plenty of time. Yes. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe some of the most racist Survivor seasons are sort of like uh, sitting up a little straighter this weekend. Uh, better not better not come out with any anti-Survivor 46 takes. Right. Because the 46 is on that ass right now. But again, mm -hmm. 
Again, the season is still young. So when some racist stuff happens, if Andy come back and be like, what was said? I'm mm-hmm. going to retweet it. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Heideck better not come out with the uh, Survivor 46. I'm out. I'm quitting. <laughs> Oh no! You you follow Brian Heideck on Twitter, right? Uh, does he still have a Twitter? Isn't it Brian underscore Cohen? I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> for I'm Brian, joking. This is yeah, different, different Brian. Brian. I'm just saying, some tweets just sit and just last forever when they should really be deleted. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. And then uh, and Soda says, "Yes, spoiled is right." S forty six, take out the trash. Okay, Soda. We just seen you snatching that, that 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 idol out of that girl's head twice in a row. <laughs> you really on, you on thin ice, baby. <laughs> like I get listen from my point of view, I don't think Soda is doing anything no. on purpose, purposely mean. But about two episodes ago, they were calling y'all all villains based on you snatching that idol out of uh out of Venus's heads twice in a row, essentially. So just that, again, let's tread lightly. We don't get to control our edits. Okay. All right. Um, and then, all right. So then this is, okay, let me, this, so Andy then had a response. Okay. And, uh, mm-hmm. Andy, you know, didn't delete the tweet. He, uh, kept it, he, you know, he, at least like, uh, I, I admire that rather than like, okay, delete the tweet. Hide. No, he, 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 you say, dude, you should delete the tweet. I think, okay. If you I think if you, are, if you are, I think if you are lying, delete the tweet. Like if yeah. it's, a, it's a flat, flat, but I don't think Andy was lying. I think he was, he was not enjoying the season. I think he just pointed the blame at casting when he shouldn't have. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now once you do that, stand on it, stand on it. But the mm-hmm. response video that Andy then drops, that's where I'm kind of like, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so at Rob has a PR firm. I don't think this is the direction that we would have gone. Uh, but, but this was, you know, uh, I would say, Uniquely Andy in terms of how he addressed the response to his tweet. Okay. So this is a video shared on the platform known as X, formerly Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy has a response to the Survivor 46 backlash. Talk to us, Andrew. Andy Heron here, the winner of Big Brother 15, a season of TV that I never claimed was better than Australian Survivor. I would like to start off by saying that yesterday, in a fit of mania, I tweeted that uh, Survivor 46 has been hard for me to get into. Should I, if you're listening to the podcast version, is it worth mentioning that there is uh, an effect and a filter on this? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you've never heard Andy's voice, it doesn't sound like this. <laughs> this is not his normal voice. This is not he his has real some voice. kind of like a effect filter. What, do you know what the name of this filter is? No, but he's got like eyes, like a little fishbowl. Maybe it's, it's like, like a, a smushed eye. head. Yeah, yeah, it's a tiny head. Tiny head. Voice. Okay. Yeah. It's a tiny head filter. Okay. And then I don't think it's as good as Australian Survivor. And I just want to say to everyone that I'm sorry. I've regretted every minute of life after hitting send on that tweet. I just want to say that I did some reflecting last night and I really wanted to think about my actions. So I went back and I rewatched Heroes vs. Villains, my favorite season of Survivor. And after rewatching that and having Survivor 46 fresh in my brain, I can confidently state that Survivor 46 is the best season the show has ever had. It's way better than Heroes vs. Villains. It is a slay, honey. Every person in that cast, A+. plus. It's actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the best season of any TV that I have ever watched in the history of my life. And so I'm sorry for what I said. And I just want to say that you never know what someone's going through, as just Chong, the second boot on the season, said. And so be nice, okay? Unless the only way you should not be nice is if someone says they don't like season 46 of Survivor, then you can definitely be mean. Get people to dog pile on them. Be rude. Because you know what? Who cares what that person's going through because they're an idiot. Survivor season 46 is a slay, honey. Love you. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I think that the resp- Andy's response has been polarizing. Well, yes, Andy. Andrew, b- b- bro, they're not mad at you because you said Survivor 46 was not good. They're not mad at you because you said casting was not good. They're mad at you because you, a person who was on a cast full of problematic people, have spoken out less about that then people would have liked mm-hmm. people would love for you to admonish and and to denounce the people on your cast and say yes i was friends with some people who did some horrible things there are, there might be bad people and hopefully they're working on themselves but what they saw was somebody who sat next to awful racist people uh, actions even and yeah. said 
almost nothing throughout the season just to go on and win the money and then pretend that it's all good and fine and dandy. So yes, Andy, you can speak about Survivor seasons. You don't have to lie and say 46 is better than Heroes versus Villains because it's just not. Uh, but let's let's just keep that same energy for all off-putting cast, including the ones that you yourself <laughs> right. were included on. Right. You're so right about the the cast uh, that if you just would have just said like, hey, I like the Australian Survivor format way more than the new era of Survivor. Not yeah. one person would have had a problem. No, that's the that's where you're wrong, Rob. People are always going to have a problem with Andy Heron because <laughs> he will not speak out against the things of BB-15. Andy, you know how to fix this. You do. <laughs> you do know how to fix this. Type up the apology app, na- app on okay. the notes app, post it, pin it. But These are my views of BB-15. Yeah, those things happened a long time ago. Hopefully people have grown. But- I have seen my the error of my ways. Let's move forward. Yes, certainly. Um, but to go back to Andy's original tweet, like uh, that there were a lot of people that did, agreed with Andy and what he had to say, going back to where we started the show of, you know, is that our pe- people are not feeling this season. You and I are saying like, hey, give it a chance. So, Chappelle, we need to bring in an expert opinion on mm-hmm. all of this. Okay, you know, Survivor 46 is it, is it worth sticking around or should people quit? consider quitting Survivor 46? So we have a brought in a special club condo television critic to tell yes. us whether or not we should quit Survivor 46. Hannah Rose is here. Hannah, how are you? <laughs> that introduction. <laughs> Hannah, hey, so no. nice hey, to hey, talk hey, to you. Hey. hey. Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone, you know, wants to remember how angry and upset they were about any premiere, just watch season 45, episode one, We Can Do Hard Things, and you'll feel better about anything that you're watching. Yes. Okay. Good point, Hannah. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, have, as somebody who's now in the outside Survivor <laughs> fandom, uh, what, what's it been like for you to see the response to Survivor 46? I mean... I have been talking to a bunch of the cast one-on-one. I feel like I'm the resident expert of like, hey, if you're receiving hate and you want to crawl into a hole, what do you do? And just like sharing stories and talking about the perspective you get when it's a little bit more uh, removed has been really awesome. And, you know, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not, I am on Instagram. You were once. We don't know how long it's gonna, okay, I was on Twitter for approximately four days and I found this like incredible loyal super small following and then i quit twitter small. Um, what are you talking about look at this in I, the chat lavina says a 10.0 mother really quake surprised. just hit the mother live stream quake. a mom i almost I, turned people, off the comments because i was like i don't know how these people are going to receive me and then i'm like they're my people yeah. they get it yeah they understand they get you know, it. so anyway uh, i haven't been seeing a lot of the hate also Chappelle, i mm-hmm. just really wanted to come on here and make a public apology to you i watched the pregame draft in my best friend's kitchen. And we were like, who's gonna do it? Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna get totally rocked by this grenade? And you were like, I'm going with Hannah. She seems, and I was just like, no. I believe, I believe my quote was, she seems like she would be one of my friends. I would love to be friends with Hannah Rose. And it has been too long before we had this conversation. Hannah, will you be my friend? I'm very happy about this. I am fangirling right now. Like I just had a lot of nervous poops. I also have no filter. I'm so sorry. I was so oh, no. nervous. I was so nervous. And um, yes, I'm fangirling. This is so exciting. And listen, I think I can make a really good friend. I just don't make a good survivor player or former player or contestant. Mm-hmm. You're a great It's so former much player. nicer talking great to you, Rob, in this capacity. Because last time we talked, I was deeply unwell. Okay. Well, happy to hear you're doing better. <laughs> Would love to get your takes on Survivor 46. Where where do you uh, come down on the... Or have we gotten too much Banu in three episodes of Survivor? Oh, I don't think you can get too much of Banu ever, personally. But that's just me. I really like how just like raw all of his emotions are coming through. And I think in the past... I mean, this is the first season I've ever watched after I've been on it albeit for three days. Three days is a long freaking time for the people that are like, what up, snowball or whatever. Snowball? Snowflake. 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 I'm like, what a snowball. I'm like, okay, try not eating for the next three days and then call me. God. Anyway, mm-hmm. 
But I think um, I really like seeing all the raw emotion. I will say as a pretty non-confrontational, semi-people-pleasing peacemaker, watching this season is also so uncomfortable. Like I am sitting on my couch alone. I usually watch it the next day because, oh no, are you frozen? Okay, I usually watch it the next day on my couch because I don't like commercials and we don't like doing things we don't like doing. So I usually watch it the next day and I'll be texting with Brandon and Brando and I'm just like, I have anxiety watching this. It's they sent me a tweet or like a meme of sorts that was like on a scale of season 45 to 46, how much do you like each other? Because I do feel like 45 is just very like we're up each other's um behinds with mm-hmm. love. And mm-hmm. so far the That's tension the and the dynamics on 46 makes me physically sweat. <laughs> That's how I feel. It's good TV. As a fan, it's, it's good TV, TV right? It, TV. That, this is exciting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm uh, really into it. And also, like, people have been like, I don't want villains. I don't think there's any villains, but I think there's drama, and I'm living for it because mm-hmm. I'm not part of it. Yeah. Right. Look, you you will never hear about me applying to go on one of these shows because I get to sit at home and talk about it. Like, why are y'all doing this? Oh my God, y'all are so crazy. I'm going to quit the season. And I get to stay at home and not have to do that because I don't want to starve. I don't want to be in any drama. I don't want to fight with anybody. And so I totally understand the urge to just kind of sit back and watch all of this unfold on television and not be on the idol, uh, the island. So yeah. although I was sad that you were my grenade, uh, I definitely would understand why you would quit because I'm trying to figure out why anybody would apply. I genuinely don't know. And there are people on my season who I look up to and respect that want to go back and play. And there are people on 46 that want to go back and play. And I'm just like, is, is something wrong with me or is something wrong with all of Mm-mm. you? Because no, you're I feel like I can't be, but seemingly out of all the seasons, it's me. I will say my mom texts me at least three times a week. It's the only time we speak. And she says, on season, I'm going to, I haven't watched all the seasons. Like on season 17, there's another quitter. She just keeps texting me about quitters throughout the seasons. Mm. That's the relationship I have with my mother. But it is very valid. <laughs> Why does she tell you about the other quitters? So that you feel better or that she feels better? I think to make her feel better. <laughs> yeah. 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 She was okay. the only one out of literally everyone in my life that was like, you, you're only on one episode? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Mother. Hannah, how did your mom react to a medical evacuation this week? Um, I don't think she watches until the whole season is out because like me, she can't do hard things. <laughs> well, what was your I was reaction? really sad for Randon. I I really liked Rand. I mean, I don't know if there's a mm, there's one person I don't love, but oh. I really like Randon, and I just felt like, especially knowing the aftermath, like that he was okay and it wasn't a disc. I mean, it just makes it so much worse. But I loved that he let himself cry. I loved that he was just like, I'm really feeling all the emotions. I was sad for Venus because I feel like. Uh, Randon was the only one there with her. Mm-hmm. Also, what's the deal with everyone hating on Venus? Is it just because she's stunning? Like, what is the vibe? I'd love to know. Does this happen on other seasons where someone's like, you're pretty, I hate you? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. It's definitely on Big Brother for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, for sure. Uh, yes, and Gandhi. Hannah, what, when you talk about Randon getting medevaced, how do you feel that Randon didn't get the Bruce treatment? We didn't get like, okay, Randon will be back next season. Is it just because he made it a couple days? Because he really didn't do Probably. anything. Yeah. It's, it yeah. Sucks. I don't, I don't know. But also like, even if they didn't announce like, we're going to get him back for next season. Like maybe they will. I hope they do. I hope if he wants, maybe after, what was it? Like five or seven days. That's so many days. Maybe he doesn't want to go back. He probably does. Cause like most people that I think apply he does. the show yeah. want to play the show. Yeah. Yeah. They what said there was like? one person in the cast, Hannah, that that you don't care for. You're not on mm-hmm. Twitter, so you don't have to worry about a coordinated response. Well, they find ways. They find <laughs> ways. I wasn't on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook when the show aired. They found ways. <sighs> Anyway, hmm. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made during pregame where I was like, here are all my hot takes on Kendra for no reason. And like, turns out I vibe with Kendra and she was wonderful. Yeah. But I just like talked so much um, shit. And then I would just see these little clips being like, Hannah's a hater. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize people would listen to what I was saying. So I've learned. 
I think I just don't like when people up an emotional button for me is when people are like condescending or patronizing or act like they're the ones like explaining how to do things. So when I see that on TV, I'm just like, that's my hmm. own stuff, you know, or is it? I don't know. Yeah. I think it is, right? You're not lying to us, right? Because we're like Jeff Probst. You're not supposed to... You can't just give us like a bunch of crap. I have so many hot takes on Jeff. I still love Ooh. Jeff. I got a little Survivor thing right there. Um, yes. Jeff. Jeff, man. Jeff? Can I just say that he gave me a hug when he snuffed my torch? Okay? He did give you a hug. He didn't go yeah. on his podcast and say that. And when he was like, <laughs> how did Hannah get cast? We made a mistake. I was like, sir, you interviewed me. You That's how I got cast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, still love yeah. that Jeff forever. Yes. <laughs> Well, you're dynamic. That's why he casted you. It's not it's not his fault. He didn't know that you weren't going to like starving for three days. You didn't even know you weren't going to like starving for three days. You found out when you were there. Like, right. He wasn't like, how do you do in extreme conditions? He was like, so what do you think about this season of Love is Blind? That's what we talked about when he FaceTimed me mm -hmm. from his living room. And I was like, let me tell you about Love is Blind. Yes. You know, okay. Like, Look, we got to get you on the Love is Blind recap. I want to be on any and all of your every... I want to have to do with everything here. If you ever want me... To be a part of it although i will say yes it's not it, it's not you it's me and this being here right now rob Chappell, my heart's just not in it and i know that i'm taking time away from one of you and um, Hannah, please i i just Hannah. i don't know how much more forthright i can be but i uh, think i should leave no stay Hannah, you don't yeah, know what are you doing we're having a good can't, time i can't stay I can't stay. Are you sure? This is me acting. You, <laughs> yeah, I got to put, put the podcast. It's been 15 minutes. I haven't eaten in 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I have, I need to go take care of my basic needs. Wait, I have to but, put myself first. I have to set boundaries. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Mr. Roybot in the chat has a, a, a conspiracy. Hannah is secretly <laughs> back on Survivor 46 as both Liz and Mariah. Wait, do we all look alike? Am I in that? Am I in that? I don't think you're in that I archetype. Before I quit the podcast, can I just say, I think it's cool. Here's a hot take. I think, I mean, she may not be going about it in the best way possible, and it's not very strategic, but I think it's cool that Liz has numerous businesses and is killing yeah. it. Yeah. Is it, is it Liz or Mariah? It's Liz. It's <laughs> Mariah. No. It's Mariah. Which one's allergic to everything? That's, that's uh, Liz. You know what? Good for Liz. Make that money and own it. I think that's so cool. And if she's getting hate, I say kindness. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm, supposed, I'm quitting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Donlin said, "This is literally what happened in person." Yeah, and Brandon looked over and he said he was the first one, and I'm really happy because he had my back. He said, "Yeah, I'm voting Hannah," and that's when I knew I was going to get a burger that night, and I was freaking pumped. Yes. Anyway, well, follow me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram okay. now. It's <laughs> at Hannah Elise Rose. And I won't quit. I might delete it off my phone, but I won't quit Instagram. <laughs> um, can okay. I also say something? I'm going to come yes. clean about something before I quit because I am quitting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something that I've only told Brando and Brandon. Okay. But And Brandon. I just feel like I, I haven't told Brandon, but I just feel like I have to be wrong. You know how like on Instagram, when you've been on a show or something, you can apply for verification and get the little blue check mark next yep. to your name? I'm going to tell everyone this just because I have to be real. So I kept submitting for verification and they kept denying it. They were like, this isn't enough. And I was like, okay. And then it was like, why don't you just pay for it? And I was like, I'm not going to do that. And then I was like, but I just want to know what a blue check mark is like. And so I paid for the benefit. So I'm fake verified. <laughs> uh, Liz, why are you like this? You just throw your money around. Oh my God. It's $14.99. And like, I'm like, well, if I don't get Starbucks anymore, then it's going to be fine. So that's, that's where I'm at. I just wanted to be really honest with everybody and hope you all still support me. Please don't comment mean things on my Instagram. Yes. Okay. Well, Hannah, thank you for confiding in us. Yeah. You're really, I know there's like a lot of people watching. I just feel like I can't live a double life anymore. I also can't be on this podcast anymore, even though you're both <laughs> great. I just can't. So <sighs> I've spoken. Okay. All right. Hannah Rose. Hey, she's <laughs> going. Shit. <laughs> Hannah, come back. <laughs> Anna, Anna. <laughs> That's it, Chappelle. Oh my God. 4K. 4K. Yeah. Oh wow. Hi. Um, 
That was wild. Okay. Okay. Hannah says, stick with Survivor 46, though. Listen, Hannah knows best, okay? She knows when to get it, when when to hold them and when to fold them. When to hold them. Why do they keep talking about that song? Jelinski was talking about it. Banu brought it up multiple times. Why is everybody obsessed with The Gambler? My theory is that Jelinski uses that phrase a lot because he's from Vegas, you know, mm-hmm. and he grew up in the in the in the back rooms of these casinos, and he tried to teach Banu that uh, you know, that that phrase. And now Banu is trying to express this thing he's been taught, but he's not quite getting the word the wording correct. He's like, uh, you gotta fold and then hold, and then Beyonce has a song, and it's not Texas, but you got mm-hmm. it ain't no is, no, is it hold them or no? Hold on, I think I think Hannah Rose wants to come back. Okay, oh, all right. Well, so, see, now we don't bring back returning. Yes. Hey, okay. girl. <laughs> hey, I'm here for my second chance. No, <laughs> speaking of the gambler. Yes. So I was looking at the. You know, on Facebook, I have Facebook because I'm old. You know, on memories, there's like mm-hmm. memories. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. Today, 14 years ago. So Kenny Rogers is singing for the opening of this hotel I'm going to be at in Texas. Yeah, the gambler with one like. I just wanted everyone to know that. It's still very relevant, okay? <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Th- thank you, Hannah Rose. That, that, that's I, somebody who knows how to fold them. Yes, that part. Mm-hmm. That part. <laughs> Hannah Rose came to Texas and did not tell me. I feel offended, but okay. This is where uh, we are. I didn't know her 14 years ago. It was, yeah, <laughs> back in time. Yeah, but still. I'm still offended. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, since we're talking about song lyrics, of course, we have Ben this season. And mm-hmm. Ben is the king of like bringing out all of these rock and roll lyrics. But I was actually very disappointed in Ben uh, this week. Now, I, I will say that uh, that Ben had a particularly uh, epic moment. Did you happen to see Ben's uh, amateur wand off? No, I mean I saw it. I didn't click it. Oh, okay. This was actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. Maybe ma- making a compelling case of why the wand off may uh, need to come back one day. Okay. Uh, here is. Let me see if I can uh, bring this up, Ben, from the other day. This is this is pretty pretty epic, Chappelle. If, he, if he's singing Oasis, I'm going to cry. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, get re- get the Kleenex ready. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, here he yeah, is. Oasis. He said, uh, this was uh, Ben posted this after the episode. He must have had like a watch party or something. So there you go. Wow. He did. He did Oasis. I mean, I, I figured it might be Oasis because I think he name dropped Oasis in the episode. Yes. Um, I, and so, so far he's done Oasis. He's done Ta- Metallica. He's done. Um, um, who sings the song Survivor? Uh, <laughs> Survivor is the name. Survivor. Sings yeah. I have the tiger. Yeah, yeah, he did. I have the tiger as well. Um, so he's made his. He made his references. Uh, okay. I wasn't expecting him to bring back the wand off. Yeah, and maybe he's the guy who can bring it back. He could save the one he saved Banu. Maybe he could save the wand off. But anyway, Chappelle, here comes Ben. He goes on the journey. And what? No journey? Look, it was less about the band and more about him and Banu coming to terms with their faith and what they mm-hmm. believe in. And Banu was, Banu was crying out to God. He fell to his knees and he said, I need a miracle. And Ben was saying, Nicholas Cage, give me strength. <laughs> yeah. So look, so you go to wherever you got to go to to get your faith. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we start talking about gurus. Jeff Probst is here. He was evoking Nicholas Cage throughout. He couldn't be focused yeah, on that's, journey. Ben's guru is Nicholas Cage. But I mean, he couldn't get drop one Banu. Don't stop believing. Oh, yeah, that probably hold that, on that to that feeling. That, that's kind of nail on the head, don't you think? Like a little bit, like don't stop too believing. Much? I think that's too much. I think at that point everybody rolls their eyes. You know, mm-hmm. like he gets back to camp, he's like, "We welcome Bonnie with open arms." You know, that that's a little bit like a little bit more subtle. You know, okay. like those are the ones I would prefer. But I think you're right. I think that if he's going to do it, he has to do the bit completely. And I think that's why I'm, I think Ben is so interesting of a character because we've had characters who their, their bit is very clear what it is, right? And throughout, they're always going back to the thing. It's the most interesting thing about them. I do not think that's the case with Ben. So, like, we had Debbie who had a bunch of jobs. We had Rupert that thought he was a pirate, even though 
he was wearing a tie dye shirt. I don't know. And then mm -hmm. we had like coach who was just lying about every goddamn thing. Yeah, exactly. But but Ben seems a little bit more real. So I think that yeah, there are moments where he can make his pun, but sometimes you could just let the you could just let it sit. You know, it was a serious moment. I give him that. Okay. Um, he did after Banu was very sad. Uh, he said to him, "That does not rock." <laughs> and it don't. Where's the lie? Okay. All right. So uh, that him and Banu, they're gonna go their separate ways, and we'll see if they end up being uh, returning to each other's open arms after the merge. Yeah. I do, wait. Is there any world where they reconnect on this in on this season? Realistically speaking, well, do you I, think it's actually going to happen? To make the merge. Yeah. I mean, we want Banu to make the merge, but do you think it's going to happen? So by my calculations, I think we have two more episodes to go. Uh, so it just would take the uh, Yanu tribe to uh, win two challenges here. I mean, it's not impossible. Like they could, they could have won if it was very close. Uh, what'd you think about Q beating himself up after the challenge, feeling like he fumbled? Now, look, I wasn't, I, I am not in the camp of being mean to survivor players when they quit, mostly because normally when they quit, it's because I, I you know, I drafted them. And so, you know, I, I'd be taking that L as well, but Q, Q was so down on himself and Survivor did Q dirty. They had, they, they showed Q kind of dealing with this loss. He, he fumbled. He, he, he wasn't clutch. They even talk about how when he was in high school, he, you know, uh, he ruined the game and then they put his face in the sound newspaper. They, yeah. And then they played the, like the Friday night lights sound effects. Like <sighs> the crowd is going wild. And he's just like, he's struggling with it. He's like dead ass. I'm ready to go. Like vote me out dead ass. Then he got on Twitter and said, nah, I was lying. I was like, oh, I don't know. He you was know, like, lying. Well, he said, like, I, it was a moment of weakness, but, like, he really bounced back. I'm just saying, like, you can only say dead ass so many times before I'm kind of like, okay. Yeah. Oh, so he was lying that he was saying he was going to quit the game. He said in the moment he felt those feelings and he said them out loud, but he didn't mm -hmm. mean them. He you know what I'm saying? Like, later, yeah. like, he came back and he was like, I'm good. You know, he just had to let his head clear a little bit. Yeah, Q, I think, needs to pick his head up because he was he was beating himself up so much, Chappelle. Thing. Like, I no know, one has ever said you couldn't practice that. It's, but it's not about practice. Yeah. It's about execution. He didn't practice either. Now, he, he definitely did. Hunter definitely did practice throwing the sandbags. He was up against Charlie. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You think Charlie practiced throwing the no, sandbags? Charlie, I don't know about Charlie. No. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if he did. He but, was right. Uh, Pack him up. Yeah. yeah. He's like the look, reverse Allen Iverson. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, some, look, maybe, maybe he is just that good. He doesn't have to practice. But the thing is, I think Q is assuming that, you know, like he should have just been raw talent better than Charlie. And people were talking uh, making fun of uh Q on the internet talking about how does a D1 athlete lose to, you know, Charlie of all people. And Charlie's like, I was a D1 athlete too. Just because yeah. I didn't go to the NFL doesn't mean I can't throw sandbags up to up on top of a thing like what are you talking about yeah this was, you didn't this play was, quarterback right and, and he definitely wasn't playing basketball you know this would be it was more like was a long talent. snapper right like why why would this help him you know so i think people need to one put some respect on charlie's name because he said I, i'm true to this but also you know maybe give q a little grace and q give yourself some grace because if you quit this game because you lost the challenge yeah i will laugh at you okay all right so Let's go back to uh, something from this latest episode with Banu. I'm sorry for the sorry for the the man that was quitting uh, Survivor for too much Banu, but we got to go back to the well. The well is deep. Okay. Yeah. Let's okay. get into it. All right. Well, we had a moment in the episode where Banu is at the journey. Liz okay. talks about Banu and his breakdown. Okay. Mm -hmm. And unless he is Leonardo DiCaprio, I cannot not believe this man. Okay. Incredible that this is uh, unless he is Leonardo DiCaprio, that you, you gotta believe Banu. He's an authentic guy. Yeah, he's not a, a Oscar winning actor like Leo, right? Um that's right. Okay. Yeah. He t he tells us in the episode that like I can't lie to Jeff Probst. I, I'm not an actor. I'm no. not an actor. He's not. What if he is? He's not Leo, and he's not yeah. an actor. Except but what if he is? Banu. 
that Banu is an actor. Banu got an IMDb page, y'all. All right. Now I have to say I'm not an actor. Why do you, you know, say I am not an actor when he's an actor? Because he's a liar. Banu is a liar. <laughs> it, look, it's right here. IMDb is not going to lie. What, what? Again, what do I? What do you want me to believe? His words or this IMDb page you have pulled up on my screen? Why does the man have an IMDb page, Rob? Is he an actor or not? I, I don't know. Uh, should we play his his demo reel? What is what is going on in this demo? Yeah, it looks is like that... he's filling up the water from a water cooler. But it looked like a shot glass. It's a tiny cup of is water. It, is it? Yeah, it's a shot of clock. Okay, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Always shot of clock. Okay. Oh, we got. Uh, did we get? Do we get Rick rolled? We, we got Rick rolled. You Rick rolled us. You wow. son of a. How dare you? How dare you? What? I hit. Play. Play his reel, and I got Rick rolled. Rob, I haven't been Rick rolled since two thousand and eight. <laughs> did that just happen for real? Because if so, I'm about to quit. Is that really what happened, or was that the you song? Can't no, lie you can't to Jeff Probst, but you could Rick roll me, sir. I, hold on. I'm still I'm still stunned. What in the 2008 just happened? Did this man play in our face? So this so he does have an IMDb page, but it is a fake IMDb page where he is Rick rolling us with an insurance <laughs> ad. Is that is what is that what's happening in front of me right now? I, I'm not an actor. I feel like such a fool. Okay, right. I don't know. Explain to me what is going on because I, think, I am. What I, I, I think this was a this was a commercial. Is he, he in it? Maybe. I, no. I don't know. I think we got Rick rolled. Oh, wait, no, here there... he is. He's filling up the water. Here. Okay, Banu's in it. <laughs> yes, Banu. Okay, first of all, who said he was not? I, I'm not an actor. Liar. <laughs> Liar. Look at go go back. Get yeah. into get into that pose. He was okay. acting down. Yeah. Okay, here he is. He's let me see. <laughs> first of all, I... Rick Ashley, you'll pay for this one day. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, it's the way he gets the water. Yes, acting, acting. Yes. Look, I don't know. Le Leo probably ain't got nothing on Bonu. If Bonu had the same opportunities as Leo, I think he could do it. You think? I think Bonu could be the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. That would win yeah. a, a a few million hearts, I think. It maybe didn't win Leo Oscar, maybe but it might win him one. Yeah, I, I'm not an actor. Yeah, okay. Banu was a liar. I check out. I check out Banu. He's that uh, an accomplished actor. Yeah, he's been in a bunch of a bunch of stuff, including notably the holdovers, the Oscar winning the holdovers. <laughs> yes, bruh. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> wait I'm a minute. An actor. Wait a minute. What? How? How come nobody told me the body yeah. was in this movie? He, okay. He said the first thing he did was get citizenship and apply for Survivor, but he was already uh, a part of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he has a SAG card. I'm not sure about that. Okay, but there he, and he's in uh, the movie Spirited from 2022. So Banu uh, is doing great. Happy for him. But hold on, but I just want to go back to Liz here for one second that you don't you don't think it's possible, do you? And unless he is Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, I don't think he's Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. No, Leo could never. Leo could literally never. Could yeah. never. Yes. He had to sleep inside a bear to win an Oscar. But Banu's doing that here on Survivor, okay? Yes. But you don't think that ba Banu's not putting us on is he is that's he not possible this? right is this the long con for the sia money <laughs> <laughs> see him see oh my god i'm so sorry babe i am so sorry i did not know i, mm -hmm. I take it back i take it back to you like i hope she listens to this because if she falls for this banu con yeah. this man is an actor because, but you know because Rob, uh, well i just want to say that it, i feel like that in hindsight this is a very odd thing to say I, i'm not an actor almost yeah. no other survivors have ever said that yeah, it's like no. Well, no. Did, nobody said here that you were an actor, right? No one accused you. Why of being is he? An actor. Why is he telling us at home? Hey, I, 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 just to get. Don't get it twisted, people. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not acting. It's not acting. He's real. 
really <laughs> acting. This man is real with two E's. You know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the actors were on strike last year. Maybe Bono needed a quick come up. And he's going like, I, I, I'm on the show. I put on my best performance. I get the sea of money. I potentially win a million dollars. The greatest scam anybody's ever pulled off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, Liz says, unless he's Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. could we do six degrees of separation from Banu to Leonardo DiCaprio? Ooh, yeah, but exactly okay. six. It needs to be exactly right. six degrees. I was going to try to work this out before the show, and I thought maybe it'd be more fun. Okay, so, so all right. So he's in The Holdovers with Paul Giamatti. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> can we get <laughs> chat? Can you help us? So Paul Giamatti... Okay, we need a we need a movie to get to with Leo. Okay, Paul mm -hmm. Giamatti is in many many other films. Hmm. Okay. But I I used to be good at this, but now I'm not. <laughs> well, I mean, when was the last time you thought about Paul Giamatti uh, films? Hmm. Okay, so yep. let's 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 do this. Okay, so Paul Giamatti is in in. In the holdovers, right? He's in the holdovers. Okay. And then um he's in uh, sideways. Sideways. Who's in sideways? Sideways has uh you know some uh, big uh, Thomas Hayden Church, Sandra O. Oh. Okay. Go with Sandra O. Oh. So where's okay. Sandra O oh linked to? What are we doing? So Sandra O oh has been in Many other things, of course, famously the Grey's Anatomy, but it has to be a movie, right? So I, no, I don't think it has to be a movie, but um, so, ooh. she does a lot of TV. She does a lot of TV. That thing it might be hard to do with Sandra O oh, because she does so much TV. If mm -hmm. we want to do movies, if we don't. So who else can okay. we go with? Thomas Hayden Church. Okay, Thomas Hayden Church. Okay, sounds good. Mm hmm. This is the kind Isn't of he... tomorrow we're going to get like Paul Giamatti was in this movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. But it has to be six or I don't respect it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Thomas Hayden Church was in Hellboy. Thomas Hayden Church is in Hellboy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who else was in Hellboy? Um, let me see. Hellboy RDB. Where's Sam Moore on this? He's not. Uh, I feel like this is uh, the the one part of this show that he would be able to contribute to. Yeah, um, the he Sandman. Was, the Sandman. <laughs> yes, in in, in Spider Man. Oh, Spider Man. Okay, so Spider Man. Uh, Toby Maguire was in, in Spider Man, right? Yep. And then uh, uh, Toby Maguire and Leo were both in the movie The Boy's Life. Toby McGuire was, was there with Leo? Yeah, it was in we the, did the it? boy's life with okay, Leo. Yeah. Bono, six degrees yeah. with Leo. Yay! Okay. Bono, Bono, Bono. He did it, but yeah, yeah just so wild. I, I, I'm not an actor. Okay. Not. He's not an actor, but he is. Mm -hmm. and he should be proud of it. Okay. He should be proud. Look okay. at all that he's done. All right. Chappelle, I got uh, w one more uh, big thing that I want to get to. Okay, but this is a little bit Survivor, but it's also a little bit Traders. It's a lot of Traders. Okay. It's actually, it. it's actually like 90% <laughs> Traders. And so this has nothing to do with Survivor. Got but anyway, it. you know, we didn't even have a Tribal Council this week. Oh, don't blame the Tribal Council. Let's go. What do we got to talk about? Okay. All right. But it has Parvati in it. Oh, okay. Parvati. Okay. All right, so uh, let's let let's go ahead and uh, and hit this because this is uh, I, I saw this right before we came on and it blew my mind. Okay, hit it, okay. Rob. All right, I want to play for you a endorse a, a commercial. Okay, all right. So pl let me bring this up on the screen so everybody can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so of course, traders just uh, wrapped up season two about a week and a half ago. And so uh, traders is hot right now, Chappelle. Okay. It's, 
everybody's talking about it. The casting this season was so good. It wasn't off-putting at all because it went and got people from every show that people like, people who have no idea what competition reality Not shows are like. Not off casting, yeah. No, they went and got these people that have no clue what is going on in the Trader's Castle from year to year, from season to season, and they let them play a game, and it brought in so many people from the fandoms that I think people are going to get back into some of these other reality games um, because of it. Okay. So, Chappelle, uh, this was a commercial, and I first saw this from the uh, great Twitter account at reality TV underscore underscore fan. Has a lot of great updates. Uh, hmm. But here is one that there has been a partnership between the traders and a little company known as Bumble. Okay. Have you seen this? No, I don't know what this is. Okay. All right. So... Here we go. Let's let's watch this. Uh, this is a commercial for Bumble with the Traders crossover event we've been waiting for. You know, this cloak actually does feel pretty good. We knew you always wanted to be a trader. Let's get to it. Okay, so in this commercial, Chappelle, mm -hmm. Parvati and Phaedra, spoilers for season two of the Traders, uh, Parvati and Phaedra are here with our pilot Pete. Yeah, Peter. Pi pilot Pete, not PETA from the Hunger Games 3X. Mm. Pilot from Pete Survivor. Yeah. has been recast as the role of the Dan Giesling. Yeah, he always wanted to be a traitor, and now he gets his chance. He always wanted to be a traitor. Let me ask you this question, Chappelle. Do you think, A, Dan Giesling passed on the opportunity to be in the Bumble commercial or B, the people at Bumble said, Dan, out. Pilot Pete, new hotness, you're in. Pilot Pete was the bachelor. I don't think they were ever going to pass up on him. Like, we're lucky we got mm -hmm. the other two traders in this commercial. It could have just been him. Justice for Dan. Uh, Joe, do, you, do, you think Phaedra, do you think Phaedra said, uh, I'm not doing it if Dan Giesling's there? There's a possibility. You know, I, I think that Peter was one of the stars of the season in, in a way that Dan was just not. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bad for Dan that he didn't get to be in the commercial. I don't feel bad for Dan. <laughs> All right, but Jeff Long, so Pilot Pete's in now. Okay, so let's go with this. In this multiverse, Pilot Pete is a traitor. Okay. But Dan is fine. Cloak actually does feel pretty good. We knew you always wanted to be a traitor. Let's get to it. You've been brought back for one last challenge. Your sleuthing skills are needed to help detect the frauds, fakes, and phonies amongst the sincere singles on a quest for love. A lovely lady needs our help detecting deceptors here. Who better to weed the snakes out of the garden of romance than us three? I know a fraudster when I see one. Uh-oh. Shots fired. Okay. Um, Chappelle, what, what is going on here? Are, that, are they saying that on Bumble they weed out the fraudsters? I don't know. Pete, Peter already played this game. He was on The Bachelor. He already did this. You know, like, oh, mm -hmm. let, let's just find out which ones are here for me and which Wouldn't ones are not. Wouldn't the faithful be better at weeding out the, like, shouldn't Trishel and, and CT uh, and, and Sandra and, uh, like, uh, the people that are, like, rooting out the traitors? Oh, you know who the best person was at finding the traitors this season, Rob? Dan Giesling. So you're right. He maybe he was maybe he was miscast because if Dan was here, he could point to all the traitors, all the fraudsters. Because he'd be, are they in the room with us right now? Yep, Dan, that's it. It's you and you and you and you and you and you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Pizza blood. So maybe you're right. Okay. Yeah. I'm a bloodhound. Nothing is getting by me. Okay. Let's not get too cocky, Peter. It's time to hunt. I want a shield to keep this scammer away from me. This guy is setting up a trap for sure. I wouldn't drink from his chalice. Mm. This guy. <laughs> yeah. What really like like who is this for? I, it's a long commercial. We're deep like, in I, the weeds for. I really <laughs> thought it was gonna be just like a character place, like some product placement, real quick. Bumble. This, this was is the, getting... the Bumble Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, and who are these stock photos? These poor people. He's like, that guy looks like a fraud. That guy is a scammer. Look at him. Look at that shirt. And he's like, oh my God. Wouldn't drink from his chalice. Okay, Parvati. Mm -hmm. Parvati. You know. And that probably isn't his arm. Listen, I've seen mirages that were more believable. I think there's a lot of fakes on this wall. This man is like a unicorn. Horny and not real. Whoa. 
Whoa. <laughs> okay. And then they pan directly to Pete like, mm-hmm. I was like, they didn't have to cut to him like that. That's messy. Horny and not real, Pete. I was like, oh, he's a pilot. He's real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have ousted the fakes, leaving only the faithful. The only thing better than a shield in this dangerous game of love is Bumble's deception detector. Is this an actual... Is this a new feature on Bumble? The deception yeah. detector? You and I have been on Bumble the same amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know exactly <laughs> what you know about Bumble. Chad, is this real? Yeah, you're asking the wrong person. Yeah. Also, they just dropping horny on on like on t basic television is wild. Was you don't this know on this TV? ever aired on television. <laughs> you oh, okay. Don't know, you don't know that. I was like, dear God, they just, I mean, Phaedra just came out and said it. Like, he's horny. Like, ma'am. Never going to give you up. Right. Never going to right. let you down. Rick, they, yeah, I'd have preferred the Rick Roll. <laughs> Can't call that man horny like that on, on public. His kids watching this show. Phaedra, horny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and does that like a common joke? Like, oh yeah, that person a I real unicorn. Yeah, yeah, a real unicorn, horny mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and not real. <laughs> that <laughs> horny ever is not real. Yeah. Yeah. And horny. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not an actor. Okay. He's not a unicorn either, because he's yeah. real. <laughs> All right. Chappelle, what else is on your list? Anything else? Bruh, I think we, we have exhausted all yeah. the corners. Give the fish to Banu, MVP of Club Conda week three. Literally, what would you be talking about? We spent 15 minutes talking about Charlie and Taylor Swift songs one time, and this was mm -hmm. way more entertaining than that segment. Yeah, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against listening to people talk about Taylor Swift, but it was a long time. And so oh, this, that was long. This felt like you could fill this episode with other stuff, but they decided to give us a compelling story about someone who thought they were down on their luck and who turned to their own faith and their own yeah. beliefs and, and was able to uh, to overcome. And I think it's very empowering. I think, like I said, it hyped me up. I felt like I could do anything. You know, I felt like, okay, at least give it a try because you never know what you can do until you try, right? So mm -hmm. it, for me, it was a story of inspiration and I like Banu and I don't think he's uh, a ba bad casting or off-putting. I'll just say that. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think that, um, look, Australian Survivor is great, but Survivor 46 is just getting warmed up, okay? It's just starting. It's just starting, okay? It started. We're, we're four, three episodes in, y'all. Give it some time to marinate. If we only watched three episodes of Big Brother 15, we might have been better off. So, you know, <laughs> things change. Just see how the tide just changes? Mm-hmm. You know, give it a chance. Yeah, give it a chance. Okay. All right. Well, Chappelle, this was super fun today. Club yeah. Condo is uh, going strong. Yeah. I think that we've had some great guests. Shout out to our first quitter and yes. our first podcast quitter. Special thanks to Hannah Rose for yeah. pop stopping by, our Club Condo critic. And then just quitting and leaving us high and dry. Mm -hmm. Call me Brandon Donlin. <laughs> Chappelle, all right. What else is coming up for you? Recapkickback.com. Yep, you can go over there and keep up with all the podcasting that I'm doing. We're doing a, a black TV theme song tournament right now. We're in the midst of it. And so uh, if you go to our YouTube page, you can watch Mari and I fill out our bracket with our special guests. Uh, we should be completing that soon. Go to recapkickback.com slash Facebook to join the Facebook community so you can give all your feedback and stuff like that. But keep up with all the podcasts that I'm doing over there. Still talking about Abbott Elementary. Sasha and I are talking about Below Deck on RHAP still. Mm -hmm. You and I just covered nothing but Netflix on well, on nothing but Netflix, we just cover Irish Wish just in time for St. Yep. Patrick's Day. So I've been doing a lot of podcasting, Rob. But yeah, follow me on Recap Kickback or at Recap Kickback wherever you get your podcast and on all social media platforms. Okay, great job once again. Chappelle will be back next month. Actually, uh, I think we might be recording a little bit early uh, next week. So maybe we might drop it uh, Sunday night, uh, Club Condo. So be on the lookout. Oh, What's that? Oh, Easter. Oh, is it, is, is it Easter this week? I think Easter's next Next week. Next yeah. week is okay. Easter. I was going to say, man, look at God. But okay. <laughs> God's yes. face. Yeah. Okay. So we got a lot of great stuff still planned for you all season long on Club Condo. So uh, check that out. Also, this weekend, they got together with Akiva for we volunteered as Tribute as we did the Hunger Games at 3x speed. So 
Enjoy that one. I'll be back live after the episode for another post game show. Got a really fun one coming up. Marianne Oketch is going to join me on Wednesday night. Sam, if that's incorrect, please stop me. But uh, that is what I have on my calendar. So Wednesday night, Marianne will join me live after the episode for another fun week. And hopefully, you know, some of these people like uh, Survivor can bring them back in from the brink. Yeah, do that. I, I look, Marianne, she's she's iconic, you know, and she's a little bit of a wackadoodle. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. So I'd love to hear you talk about Marianne. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us back here on Club Condo. Take care of a good one. Bye.